Every so often, I like to do a Lightroom tips video. Um, I've been using Lightroom long enough that that when I when I see and hear something about a tip, or when I find one that I really wasn't using a lot, I usually think that it's a pretty good one to share. So without saying that these are five tips you've never heard before, because you, you guys probably watch way more Lightroom videos than I do, I'll go with these are five tips you probably haven't seen before. I'd be surprised if anybody saw them all, though I'm sure somebody at YouTube is gonna leave a comment that they did. But um, I think you'll learn something in here. Plus, there's a lot of little mini tips that I've given before that are buried inside of these tips. So I'm sure you're gonna come across with something. I do get asked about Lightroom, the desktop cloud version, uh, tips for that quite a bit. I actually use that version more. The problem is, is Adobe kept it pretty simple and they didn't put a lot of little secret handshakes in there that you you know, you know have to go and dig and, and, and find inside of there. So it's not really much for a tips video, but if there ever is one, I'll be sure to make it. But for classic, let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, your first one is going to be uh, something with solo mode. So solo mode has made it into tips before. You can call this a bonus tip if you didn't know what it was, but if you right click in the gray space on any of these panels here, uh, just next to the panel name or even on the panel name, you can turn on solo mode, which makes it so that only one panel could be open at a time. And it keeps you from scrolling up and down. And, and most people really like turning on solo mode, but there might be those times where you wanna work between two panels and you don't want the other one to keep closing, you can hold down the shift key. So I have the color mixer panel open. If I were to open basic, you can see color mixer closes, right? But if I have color mixer open and I shift click on the basic panel, that will open that one as well. So I can scroll back and forth between the two of them. If you want to keep adding panels, which kind of defeats the purpose of solo mode, uh, you can shift click on another panel. So now I can have three open there. So I don't know that there's a limit to open. I won't go try to open all of them, but I don't know if there's a limit, but that's a good one if there are, uh, if you do use solo mode, but you do find that you wanna have one or two panels open at a time to work between them, that can be a really useful one. Speaking of things that are really useful, I have got a very useful 30 second word from our sponsor. Um, I have once again teamed up with Dave Cross, uh, Dave Cross Photo Summits to uh, host the Lightroom Summit 2024. So this is a full five day virtual summit online where we have got really the, the best Lightroom instructors out there. And, and I know everybody says that, but these really are not just the, the best people that know Lightroom. These are the best people that know how to teach Lightroom as well. And that's really important. Uh, we worked with them to put together a great class list that covers everything from landscapes and portraits and wildlife and developing and printing and web and organizing your photos, just about everything in between. So there's gonna be a class for just about everything. Every class is free to watch for 48 hours, so you can sign up for a free pass using the link in the description there. Uh, it's free to watch for 48 hours, and then there's also a VIP pass, which gives you lifetime access to watch the classes whenever you want. You get class notes along with it, and the instructors also prepare a special bonus for the VIP uh, sign up. So you can find out more over on the website, sign up for a free pass, and also hopefully you'll check out the VIP pass. Hope to see you there. Next little tip is is a simple one, but it's a change that 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 I think sneaks by because it's it's fairly recent. And that is, we get these little eyeball icons next to each panel. Okay, so that eyeball icon lets you click on it. Just click that'll turn that panel off temporarily and then just let up on your mouse and it turns it back on. The other thing where it helps with is when you're looking at the panels, you can actually see a slight difference in the shading of the eyeballs. So when the eyeball is bright, that means there are settings from that panel in on the photo. And when the eyeball is dim like that one, that means that there are no settings from that panel on the photo. So just a, a quick tip to visually see what you've done to the photo, but also be able to turn those on and off to see what maybe specific panels did. And if you didn't know uh, already, the backslash key is a full before and after. So while those eyeballs are temporary before and afters for specific panels, the backslash key does a full before and after for the photo. Moving on down to the next tip, let's go ahead and open up a panel here. Uh, once in a while, you might want to give yourself a little bit more space. Uh, it could be for a number of reasons. It could be it just, it gives you more space. Some people like to have more space dedicated to their panels. Uh, the more space that you have, the more the more control that you'll also get in moving a setting, 
okay? Because there's more space for that, uh, that little adjustment slider to work with. Well, you can grab over here and you can move this out and eventually it's gonna stop, okay? And it's, again, looks different on different computer screens. And that's where this tip could come in. I don't know that I'd use it on this computer screen, but depending on the size of your screen and the space that you have, if you hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt on PC, and you click on this little bar here to slide it out, you'll actually be able to slide it out quite a bit. Now, again, I don't think anybody wants to go that far, so we won't go to the extreme, but just know that if you do get to the point where that's not enough space for you, and I have gotten messages about this where people say they, they don't have enough space there, then feel free to hold down Option or Alt. You can drag it further out, which then again gives you more minute control over each adjustment slider because now each slider has more space for you to move it. Now, the next tip deals with the letter I for info. Uh, that will show info in the top left of the photo. So that's not a new tip, and I, I believe I've, I've probably covered it before. I'm sure I covered it before in other tip videos, so we won't call that the tip. What we will call the tip is that you can change this info. And I don't use it a lot, but there are times where I do use it where I might wanna see the photo info for some reason. I might wanna see the size of the photo, which is more often than not the case. Otherwise, you'd have to go over to the library module, look at your metadata. And sometimes I wanna see the size of the photo that I'm dealing with here to decide uh, how much I can crop, what else I might wanna do with it. Well, you can come up here to the view menu, go down here to view options, and then that will show you loop info number one, loop info number two. So remember we hit the letter I, so it goes from no info to info one to info two, all right? So right now I'm on info one, it shows me the file name, and then it shows me capture date and time, which I, I generally would never care about. And then it shows me the crop dimensions. And then down here it shows you info two is some other settings. Well, what I would do is go over here and change capture date and time to common photo settings, okay? And that's pretty similar to exposure and ISO with a couple of extra uh, bits of information in there. But that would be more useful to me because there are some times where I wanna see the photo settings. And so I'd normally open up the histogram because you can see those settings right underneath it. But th this histogram gives me no useful information. And the only thing I could ever really want from it is highlighting shadow clipping and holding the option alt keys on the white and blacks. Get that done and that allows me to save the space for the good creative tools for editing rather than uh, keeping that open. Now our last tip deals with zooming. So what we can do here, of course we can press Command or Control plus or Command or Control minus, and that's just like Photoshop to zoom in and out. If you look on the left-hand side, if you have those panels open, you can also uh, do some quick zooming inside there to fit the photo 100% or some level in between. Again, not the tips, that's just a, a quick review had you not seen those, but what we can do is if we hold down the shift key, we get this little magnifying glass with a, a left right arrow on it. And this is a scrubby zoom. And you gotta have your graphics acceleration turned on for this. So you wanna check your preference. But now we can scrub in and scrub out on the photo. Drag to the right, drag to the left. So now I can scrubby zoom if I wanted to. The other thing that I could do is hold down the command key on Mac or the control key on PC. And then I can just click and drag into an area of the photo, and that's what's going to jump into view uh, in my screen there. Again, you can usually click on the photo or just click fit or command or control minus if you wanted to zoom back out. Uh, since you're watching this Lightroom Tips video, chances are you like Lightroom Tips, and I did one a while ago. This one's years, uh, I did this years ago, but the tips are still very applicable today, and it was a very popular one. So if you're in the mood for even more Lightroom Tips, this video would be a great place to go to next.